Is that your R? Yeah, it's your R. <laughs> we ain't got no. We got 30 seconds. Oh, is it, we actually start on a clock? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's why they have that big clock over there. Digital seconds. Okay, I'd like to. He likes the ones with the big hand and the little hand. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, it's going to be that kind Mickey of night, Mouse. is it? I'd like to officially state for the record that Commissioner Matthew is raining on my parade already. <laughs> well, the good news, no one's here. So we're not actually able to conduct official business at this point, Russell. You need to voice that out. <clears throat> are we ready? Good evening. Uh, if any of you are wondering why the podium's so crowded tonight. Uh, Thanks. Thanks, Dad. This is going to sit. Uh, don't anybody panic. I don't have any real power. I can't vote on anything. Uh, we're, the Blade's doing a story about the city commissioners and kind of a glimpse inside uh, how a small town city government works. So no one's more surprised than me that they let me sit up here this evening. So, uh, uh, but I'm sure they'll turn the microphone off on me at some point this evening. I just want to take a quick second to thank all the commissioners for the time they gave me in the past few weeks for interviews. Uh, uh, much respect for them and for all the people who volunteer their time uh, to make this a better community. I also want to thank uh, Stacy, City Clerk Stacy Smith for her insight and Finance Director Amber Faha for her input and City Manager Amy Lang for her patience with me over several meetings. And my apologies, I know I dropped a couple F-bombs while we chatted, so uh, uh, I do it all the I time. You were in a oh, I'm just getting started, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. So uh, here we go, is uh, the agenda. Don't we do the Pledge of Allegiance first? No, first we go roll call, and oh. say everyone's here in the invocation. Okay, roll call please, everyone here. Okay, the invocation. Thank you. <clears throat> Please join me in prayer. Oh God, we give you thanks for this particular time of year. A time of year in which we look forward to the celebration of the greatest gift of all. And we respond in our own lives by the giving of our gifts to, uh, to those who we love and care for each and every day, but also opening our hearts up to those beyond our regular circle, to uh, care for those who have particular needs, those who would otherwise not be able to join in to the fullness of the season. So may we experience that in this particular season and may it be something that uh, we find more and more true of our lives day by day as we move through this coming year also. We, we do give you thanks for the work of uh, the City Commission uh, and the employees of the City also, uh, those in the office staff and those who are out on the, the streets uh, uh, keeping um, the streets safe place to be and to, uh, to operate. Um, we pray that uh, you would now be with the commission as they go about their work. Uh, may they uh, find some uh, levity in this particular commission meeting, uh, but they may, may they also uh, uh, be attentive to the work that needs to be done the work that uh, the, the citizens of this community expect them to do and to do in a way that is uh, good and right. Gracious God, hear our prayers now and always, we ask in the name of the one who has come. Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll start the Pledge of Allegiance. No, we're going to have a vacation. moment of silence. Bush. We're going to take a moment. Oh, yes, that's right. We're going to take a moment of silence uh, in honor of the passing of former President George H.W. Bush.
Okay. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll begin with approval of the agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda? There's no changes. Do I have a motion to accept the agenda? I move to approve the agenda. I have a um, motion by Chuck. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Mark. Any further discussion? If not, the agenda is approved. All right, we'll move on to proclamations, recognitions, presentations. Uh, there are none. Is that correct? Uh, so we will be open to public comments. This is the time where citizens are encouraged to speak publicly. We request that you come to the podium, state your name and address, speak respectfully, and uh, please try to limit your comments to three minutes. Are there any public comments? Jim, you're not allowed to speak. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> My name is Shaley George. Do I my address, 130 and a half West 6th Street. Um, thank you guys for having us. Uh, I'm from the National Orphan Train Complex, as most of you know. Um, we would like to invite you to Night at the Notch. It's on New Year's Eve. We're having a celebration and a fundraising event. Uh, we'll be exhibiting the Dear Sister exhibition, which features siblings during the orphan train movement. It's one of our most popular questions about what happened to siblings. Uh, it's often a question that gets uh, asked today in foster care as well. And it's interesting through research to see that many of the precedents were set 100 years ago and not really changed. Um, and so we would love to have you all there including you, Mr. Mayor, of the night. So we have comp tickets for you guys, and we'd love to see you there. Comp um, ticket? Yeah. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> we would absolutely love to see you there. Um, the, the star of the event is the Hetling Letters. Um, we normally don't get to see children during the orphan train movement talk to each other. We have 2020 vision from 60-year-olds or 80-year-olds who <clears throat> have this hindsight of being an adult. But the Hetling Letters are dozens and dozens of letters written between four siblings. And their experience as an orphan train rider sneaks in. Um, a lot of the times it's just talking about their horses, who are named Bob, Topsy, Nellie, Nod Nellie Nettie, and many other things, and 200 chickens. Um, but it's an amazing time to come and see it, uh, and we'd love to have you there. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Shaley. Uh, any other public comments? All right, we'll close the public comment session and we're moving on to the uh, discussion agenda. Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, personal handbook changes and possible resolution. I had a couple of weeks to look at this. I don't know how you want me to proceed, if you want me to go over some of those, or if you just have questions or comments. I don't know how you want to handle it. You can see there was quite a few small changes anyway. I got a question. Sure. Probably for Justin. Just to give me the definition of, I understand any re reason. Give me the definition of no reason and example. Okay. I, I assume we're talking about at-will employment. Okay. I understand that part. Okay. Well, what happens in these situations is, is that if we, in Kansas and every other state in the nation, uh, has adopted the concept of at-will employment, if we put something in the handbook that says we can fire you for any good cause or we can fire you for any you know, reason whatsoever, by law, you are no longer an at-will employee. Okay. We now have to give you good cause. At the misnomer with at will employment, especially, well, especially nowadays, is that I can just fire you for any reason whatsoever. That's actually not true. I can't fire you for an illegal reason. I can't necessarily fire you if I haven't followed the proper policies and procedures. I can't fire you if you're a protected class, a whistleblower, all sorts of reasons like that. So you can still fire somebody if, you know, I. 
if, if we're working together and I decide it's just not working out, I can come in and say, hey, you know, Mr. Sacco, it's not working out. You got to go ahead and go. Same way you could come in and say, hey, Mr. Farrell, this isn't working out. I'm going to leave. But technically, yeah. you have a reason. Yes, but technically you do. However, with at will employment, we don't have to give a reason. We can just say, hey, it's time to go. The reason why we do that is, is that it allows for an employer to have control over, you know, good and bad employees. It also, though, on the flip side, protects employees mm -hmm. because there's not a contract there that's binding them to something. For example, a period of time that they would need to stay without breaching a contract. You know, you got to give us two weeks' notice, or you're breaching the contract. So, at will employment isn't necessarily. It, it can't be. I don't like the way you look, or your age. Your, Why can't you know, it be? Because, because it's of no reason. No, no, no. It's illegal. It's illegal. You can't do that. Protected classes are going to be gender, um, race, religion, all sorts of things. Those are protected classes. So I cannot sit you down. I can sit you down and say, you know what? I think you do a really cruddy job. See you later. Nothing wrong with that. But if I sit you down and I say, you know what? I think you're getting too old, and I don't like the fact that you're a guy, now that's illegal. So I can't fire you for being in a protected class, okay? If for some reason you would come in and say, hey, you know, I think, uh, you know, uh, I dealt with a case one time where we had the, 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 the public entity had kind of a slush fund where they would help pay for things for different parties and stuff like that. They thought somebody was taking money out of that to buy things that were not appropriate. They actually went to a commissioner and told them what was going on. And that person was then fired. Well, you can't do that because that person's now in protected class or considered a whistleblower. There's a lot of protections that are built in without will employment. You just simply can't come in and, you know, say, yeah, I mean, I, I can, when they say you can fire them for any reason, it has to be a legal reason. Right. Regardless of what a handbook would state. Yes. Right, I mean, this supersedes. Oh, if I put in the handbook, right. I can There's fire you because you're, you're you know, because if, if you're over the age of 50, I can fire you. That's not legal. So it's, it's what they, when you get into that realm, it's against public policy. So you say so no you, reason, and you can still fire them because they're over 50. No. No, no you can't. What? So you don't have to give them a reason. Well, you can just say walk. Okay. Yes. But that's, but I'm not insinuating that I'm firing you because you're old. Okay. I guess you could. I mean, in, in some strange scenario, I guess you could and keep it to yourself and nobody's going to know that. But if I have exemplary, or if I have positive reviews, and I'm terminated, mm -hmm. then I have some recourse because I have no indication that I've done anything wrong. There's never been any documentation that would justify my termination. Right? There, okay. there would need to be some. So in that situation, more than likely, you're going to believe, for some reason, you were fired for an illegal reason. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's where that's where we have the policies and procedures, and that's where we have to trust our department heads to do the right thing. They're going through that process. They understand our stair-stepping uh, disciplinary process and the way to do that properly. Document those things. The verbal, the written uh, disciplinary procedures and going on, stair-stepping up from that. If you have an employee that is exemplary and is completely fired for no reason whatsoever, great you know, reviews, all this kind of stuff, then there's going to be, first off, we're going to have an issue because the department head didn't follow policies because there should be some disciplinary documentation right. there. And then second off, we're not going to assume that we've done something illegal, okay? We probably violated, violated policies and procedures, but that person, if they are in a quote-unquote protected class, very well could make the allegations to why that was why they were fired. That's why we, our, our department heads are so well-versed in these things with the disciplinary procedures and stuff like that so that they understand. I mean, without documentation, I always tell folks this, without documentation, we open up a big, giant hole. Right. And we've got to fill that hole, and guess who's going to fill it in? The person who got fired, right. more than likely the person who got fired's attorney right. is going to fill that in. Yeah. And it's not going to be good for us. Yeah. That's why it's important for us to have good policies, good procedures, and that we follow them. We can't, yeah. I can't tell you, I mean, we could have the absolute best policy handbook in the entire universe. That's not going to keep us from getting sued, though. You yeah. can't. Anybody can yeah. sue for anything. <clears throat> but you see where I'm coming from. Yeah, but you got to. Well, Yes, yeah. but I mean... Because it, technically, by the law and by our handbook, I could just say, you know what? I could be thinking, your kid beat up my kid in the playground, you're fired. Well... And, and under our handbook, we could do that. 
Well, and not if we him. didn't, and if we no. didn't have a supervisor who did the right things as far as documentation and the whole uh -huh. thing, technically by law in our handbook, it can be done. Now they can yes. go and come back. Sure. I mean, with that will employment, technically, yes, they could. But However, to, it's not really our handbook that allows for this. you got to understand that it's the concept in the law that the Kansas Department of Labor and every other state has put in. That's the concept of at-will employment. Now, is there going to be, like anything else, a potential for some unfairness or some wrongdoing? Absolutely. That's why we have other protections built into place. But, yeah, I mean, I could decide that I think you looked at me weird and your kid beat up my kid on the playground. But... You know, that's where we have to trust our folks to be responsible enough not to do that. And to understand, you know, if we have a situation like that and it's discovered by our leadership here in the city, there's going to be some adverse, you know, yep. there's going to be some disciplinary yep. issues then they're going to fall on that department who did that fire. So we have those built-in protections. And with our policies and procedures, actually more built-in protections because we do expect our department heads to, you know, to, to use the disciplinary policy and to be the leaders in their departments. So right. We do have some more leadership, built, or not leadership, but protections built in there. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Any other questions? Stacy, I'm. I noticed on the um, section about resignations, I think there's just some language that needs to be cleaned up a bit. You worked on it, but I think that it needs to have added you took out two weeks, and then it refers to the required amount of time. Oh, I see. yes, it's section six. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have the number of the section. Section seven. Seven. Okay. Okay. The way I read it before was, it basically said you had to do that, mm -hmm. and so that's why we took out. We just added the words preferred. What what were you thinking? Well, if it's two weeks, um, um, it doesn't, you, you crossed out the two. It said, so now it says. Oh, it shouldn't be crossed out. Right, okay, okay, two weeks preferred. Is, that's, yes. that's clear enough. Yes. new um, we did add a lot of language about conduct of employees on and off the job um, it's been a little while since I looked at this work comp was cleaned up a little bit a lot of things that it said were repeated itself. It's definitely a work in progress and every year, I mean, you think that you've made a bunch of changes and you won't need to again and then every year there's there's always more. I have a question on 3.17 B. Mm -hmm. I can understand if an employee, what is the certification time? Uh, six months. Six months. Mm -hmm. I can understand if someone resigns and then costs like that going out. But especially when we're saying we can fire you for no reason, so we get rid of somebody. And then we're going to turn around and say, not only are you going to lose your job, but you know what? You're going to pay me back for uh, uh, this motion test that I had to take. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet if someone is around seven months, that'd be okay. Um, I just think what we're doing is ask, we're just throwing salt in the wound. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can understand, you know, getting rid of the person. We have the right <coughs> to do it. But then you're going to turn around and say, oh, by the way, you're going to you owe us money. See, I guess I, when, I, when I think about that and I process that, and I wonder the same thing, Sam, but in my opinion, that's <clears throat> that would take the assumption that there wasn't cause for that employee to be left and I think that when you when you look at the the amount of money that goes into training an employee and and preparing them to do the tasks that they're with if they're if they're let go within six months there's there's a pretty good reason for that and it's not the city's 
that, it's, that, that our, our city staff, our department heads are going to work with that individual and if for some reason things are so rough within the first six months that that person has to be let go, I don't think that it's fair for the city to have to, to eat those costs because we're going to have to be paying, if, if they had to pay Mark to do that training and then he gets let go and I come on board, the city's going to be out that training for me. So. I see it as a viable way for the city to recoup some of those training monies. I think another way to look at it, and I'm sorry if I'm interrupting you, but um, Sam, what would happen if we had somebody who went for a CDL, the city paid for it, and after they got the training, maybe they worked another couple of weeks and then they quit? And there's people that will do that. And there well, are. If they, if they quit, then they should. And they said yeah. they resign, but they should. I'm talking about an employee that, um, and maybe. I would like the wording if it was for real just cause, then I could well, understand that. I think we got to have some confidence in our city manager and in our managers in that they're not going to willy-nilly fire people, and that's what you're alluding to. And I don't think I think we need to have more confidence in our managers. I certainly do. If that's the issue, we have bigger issues. That's right, and I don't think they're going to willy-nilly fire somebody. And I agree that I think they need to recoup those costs because there's people that are going to come work and get their CDL, and I know there's people out there that if I screw off enough, they'll let me go. But I got my CDL, and I can go get paid more someplace else. It's, it's, not, of, uncommon, I'm sorry, it's not un This isn't an uncommon thing. The reason why this is in there is that you know we're they've been discharged for a legal reason. If they've been terminated or they've resigned, they're deriving the benefit, so they can come get their CDL, and then that keeps them from saying, "Thanks for paying for the CDL. See you later." I mean, there, it's, that's actually a very common thing because what it does is essentially what it is is it's a built-in protection for us. Either we're going to have a good employee who's in, we're going to essentially recoup those costs of him working, him, him or working, or if you decide to jump ship or you mess up and get terminated, you're not going to get to walk away with that benefit that we've paid for. A, a point of reference, when I was working for uh, my previous agency, there was an, a part of our contract that they would provide X amount of training, but for every every two months of training that was received, there was an expectation of staying after completion of that training for one month. And if you left, then you would be responsible for the fee, uh, the, the standard fee that would have been offered for a, an hour worth of session. So it's, I mean, it's not, there's an expectation, hey, we're, we're doing something to help you out, understanding it's going to benefit us, but if you, if, if you leave or, or that was and that was whether I resigned or I was let go. There was the expectation if I hadn't fulfilled that obligation that they would that would be a part of what I would be owing back to them. Plus, it's, there's nothing that says that we have to pay for their CDL. That's right. Yes, it is. In the really? Yeah. I mean, we, we can't make it a requirement of you need to have it before you can be hired. We do say that we prefer for like yeah. Ron's and Jeremy's jobs, mm. for example. Yeah. I, I can appreciate I can appreciate the concern, but I think the point at which that that would be problematic for the city, then then it would elicit a lot other it would elicit more issues that need to be addressed more than this issue with the single employee. There would be other systems, there would be other staffing issues that would need to be addressed more than about <coughs> recouping these costs. We've got bigger issues than if that's what's right. going on. And honestly, if that's the situation, an employee handbook's not going to stop that because they're not paying attention to the policies and procedures that are here anyway. So, again, we have the other issue. Does anybody have any other questions on this? Yeah, my last one was on... Uh, city vehicles. If a city vehicle is available and the employee says and available the employee can use, the employee just wants to use his own vehicle, why are we going to pay him half? Why not just say no, you don't get anything? City vehicle is available. We want you to use the city vehicle and if you don't, you don't get any reimbursement. To me, it's either all reimbursement or none. Well, and I think... And I don't want to give names, but I did put this in here partially because of a person who does like to take their own vehicle because they bring a spouse. 
and we've had that in the past many times. They bring a spouse, and um, it's quite a long trip. And so this person has gotten permission to get paid mileage, and it's over $500 whenever this person goes. <coughs> but on the other hand, I understand wanting to bring the spouse, it's three or four days. This person doesn't like to go by themselves, um, but we do have the policy you can't take a city vehicle and bring a family mm -hmm. member or bring someone with you. And I figured it up and I think that if the city vehicle was driven, it was three or four tanks of gas. So, <coughs> $150 versus 500 was kind of the way I came up with that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, and we talked about this, that's a lot of money. Um, and I, I see what you're saying because that's the way we had it for so long. But once in a while I did have a staff person that just wasn't comfortable driving someone else's vehicle. She worried about it. And so at that time, I let her take her own vehicle. She was training for ambulance billing down in Minneapolis. And I just, um, we just paid for her gas because it was cheaper to do that than pay mileage. You see, I just think if we're going to let them do that, which is fine, and I can understand that, they should get the full benefit of what the federal law will allow. So I you, mean, you think mean, if they take their own vehicle, they yeah, get paid they the full? Yeah, they should get the full reimbursement. I mean, they are going for the city. They wouldn't right. be going there if it wasn't for the city. The only, the only thing I can say about that is then I don't know if there would be a reason to have any vehicle take for training because you might find everyone's going to want to take their own. I yeah. mean, you actually come out <clears throat> way ahead. Yeah, but if you, you put the deal, if there was an overnight, if they're going to be gone over a day, and then to me, they, should, they could take their vehicle because then you got a city vehicle that could be out of touch for one or two days. And I could understand that. Yeah. Uh, if they're just going to make a day trip up and down, to me, that should be a city vehicle. And to me, if someone's going to do that, I mean, and take the trip on the city, to me, they should get full reimbursement. Most, I would say most of the training where we take this Equinox is overnight. Then they should get full reimbursement because, I mean, they're, that's their time they're putting out and going and whether they take their spouse they're away from this or they're away from their family and they're doing it for the city and yet we're going to say you only I mean I've never been anywhere where when you did that that you only got half pay mm -hmm. or half your amount because I watched the federal so the federal government would allow and that's what people would go with I took that straight from Hayes's travel policy it was several pages long and we did add that conduct policy here based on what they had but that's what they do is half and i know multiple other companies are like what well, you want to do there it's it's half of what it could be but that's due to the fact that it's it's also their choice if they mm -hmm. want to take their spouse maybe they're going to make a road trip out of it take a couple extra days do what they need to do so then it, it falls back it's you know it's their choice they, they have the option to take the company <coughs> vehicle and have it completely paid for right but they choose to take their own it's a choice you don't have to we're not sticking it to them. We're just saying that, hey, it's more cost effective. But whether you take the company vehicle or our vehicle or your own, then we're not going to pay you more for taking your own. Right, because I think they sense. should be encouraged to take company or the city yeah. vehicles whenever they can. A, I think it's a decent compromise. I think, um, there's, right. hey, this is an offer. You, you have a free ride. <clears throat> you don't want to take that. You want to take your own car. That's fine. You're not going to get reimbursed as much, but you have the luxury of having your own vehicle. Yeah. Um, the previous agency I worked for, that's that's how they did it. Yeah. If there was a company car, you know, that, that if there was a car available and you didn't take it, you had a, a reduced mileage reimbursement, and it was about half of what it would have been if there wasn't a car available. And, and then that would, so they would still reimburse. They would reimburse full if there wasn't the vehicle available. They would reimburse less if it was, and you chose not to take. And I know. Is that, is been, that part of the policy that we're going to have to? If there's none available yes. and they take their own car, they get full? Yes, that's, that is in here somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. 17 4 b Okay. Yeah. Yep. Because that, that does happen. Yeah. Um, yep. Actually, there was a few weeks ago where three of us needed to be gone at one time, and we did make it work, but it was a little bit. It left some other people here without a vehicle, mm -hmm. you know, for their daily work. So, okay.
I would move to approve resolution 2018-2077. I second. I have a motion by uh, Keaton, a second by Christine. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to just the sun safety. Yep. Yeah, okay, resolution. No. Um, 2018-2077 Sun Safety Program Support. Is this a typo? Mm -hmm. That's the action to go. Oh. I need sorry. a motion to accept the uh, minutes of November 21st. I move to approve the minutes of the November 21st, 2018 meeting. I have a motion by Christy. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Keaton. Thank you for the discussion. If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passed. I need a motion for accept the appropriation ordinance number 22. <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve appropriation ordinance number 22. I have a motion by Mark. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Keaton. Any further discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion approved. Now. Okay, resolution 2018 2077, 2077 Sun Safety Program Support. 2078. Commissioners, uh, before we use the resolution for the Sun Safe Program, uh, before we get to that, I want to give you a quick background of how we came to this and how, why we're here today. Um, throughout the bleacher um, project and replacing the bleachers on the um, west side, the Pee Wee Fields, the two, Pee -wee, two bleachers in between the fields had a net covering for protection, ball protection covering. When we put the new bleachers in, they no longer have that because it was specifically mounted to the other bleachers. Um, so now there's no protection from the other field. Um, in talking about replacing that, the talks came up about sun, shade, um, dual shade and protection. Um, those things are quite expensive, so we started looking at grants, came across a dermatology grant. Um, stipulation on the dermatology grant is a full year sun safe protection or uh, program awareness uh, for a full year before you even qualify to apply for it. Um, so along with help with uh, Jessica Brook and Ashley Hutchison, um, we've kind of formed a team to incorporate this whole sun safe health program for the whole city. Um, not only to incorporate the complex, but the pool, the Broadway Plaza are the main three and uh, working on projects and grant funding for all, all those um, entities <coughs> but for you is the uh, resolution for the sun safe program to be put in place and before we do that uh, we do have somebody from the public um, Von Lee Fry he's a coach uh, for many years uh, he spends a lot of time out with his job uh, specifically but um, coaching going to other complexes um, his voice he's got a few words to say but um, to really compare the complex specifically to other complexes across the state and wherever he travels to um, that are lacking the shade factor. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bonley Fry, uh, 2389 Union Road, Clyde, Kansas. Uh, and just real quick to hit on what Chris has said, uh, I've coached, I have two boys that play travel baseball now. Uh, one is a 12 year old, which I've been the head coach for since we got started at the age of eight. Uh, the other one is a nine-year-old who started just last year, and we carry about eight to ten tournament schedules a year, uh, which we always play in our home tournament here. But when we go other places, and I'll just give you some examples, if you look up Betta Sports Complex in uh, Topeka, Wall Complex, Grant Complex in uh, McPherson, uh, and then uh, Bill Burke, although not per so much the protective nets, they do have the trees. Uh, and I know that when we go to these places and we partake in these tournaments during the day 
it's a lot easier to go set in the shade. When you're setting at a ball game, even out here on a hot June night, and I know probably all of you have been out there, you sit there in your own pool of sweat, literally. Uh, so what would be great is not only the protection from the sun, and like Chris said, I work outside every day. I've already, I'm 42 years old and I've already had three spots removed. Uh, but not only does the shade require for the kids to, to be safe, but also the protection, like he brought up, it's not the foul ball from your field you're watching, it's the foul ball from the other field. And I know my wife uh, is a very avid fan with our kids, and I know a lot of moms, grandmas, grandpas that come out to those ball fields, and if we had some more shade, I think we would have a lot more. I think we would have a lot more participants that would come, and I will be honest, out of all the ball fields that we've played on, uh, we have two of the best playing surfaces right out here in the Pee Wee fields. There, I mean, there is not very many other places that match the actual playing surface. I know when we talk to other teams about coming to Concordia for our tournaments and things like that, they always bring up the fact that there's no shade, there's no cover, there's no place for these people to go while they have a three-hour break between games. So they pack up and leave or they don't come, which also breaks into the part of, well, we're trying to bring other teams from out of town into town. They're spending their money here. Uh, but when we flat get told that our facility, oh, the facilities are great, there's just no place to get into the shade. So, and I've heard that time and time again. Uh, but as far as what they're actually working towards and the facilities that we have, we could have tournaments here in the summertime, have the support from the community. I think the community would come out and support that. And uh, as well as taking care of our skin, our kids' skin, because uh, we only get one chance at it. So do you have any questions for me directly? I have just a real quick question. When you say you've, you've had a few other coaches uh, talk to you about the lack of shade or that they'd come here, what do you mean by few? Is this something you hear a lot? Or uh, other coaches, friends? I mean, is this how, well, the, how widespread do you think this talk is? I mean, that, like in our co coaching yeah. community, what I call our coaching community, uh -huh. you know, okay. you run into the same teams, you run into yeah. the same people, different places. And, uh, you know, word gets around. Uh, but I would say, I mean, I would consider some of them my friends, and then talking to some of the other ones, I don't know them from Adam. Right, uh, but so there's a lot. There's a lot of uh, people from other towns talking about the lack of shade here. I, I would. I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna venture out and say a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, there is some, mm -hmm. and I know, and it's you know, just like, just like how word travels in town. Sure. Word travels in that community. That, that's what I. That's really what I'm asking there. Yeah. It words traveling then. Word travels. Yes. Okay, yes. that's what I want. Thank you. Chris, I had a question for you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, Chris. Um, in addition with the sun, the sunscreen, the uh, stations, mm -hmm. what about, um, and I, I don't know where, what about planting some trees out there in addition to that to help, to, to help demonstrate not only are we providing sunscreen, but we've also taken these steps. You know, it'll take X number of years for these to grow to maturity where they'll be able to provide it. But I, to me, it seems like that would be something mm -hmm. that would be relatively economic. Mm -hmm. It would be something that could cover a lot of different uh, cover and would also help demonstrate to the uh, American Dermatology, American Academy yeah. of Dermatology um, that, that this, this grant will help us in the short term, but we've taken long term right. efforts as well. And that's another thing we've talked about. They have planted quite a few trees out there okay. in the past that for some reason or the other won't last when they died and had to be taken out. Hmm. Um, they, I know Jerry said he just took out the last couple within the last two years. Um, they planted 12 to 15, I don't know if you guys remember, because um, they were all donated and given, I know that, but um, they still didn't last. Okay. I don't, I don't have a reason why. That was before my time. But yeah, um, that's something we have talked about as well. Um, and along with the shade, like you said, the sunscreen availability is another part of this program and the overall um, awareness, education part of it, too, is that we're all working on. So these sunscreen stations, um, see we're going to have like one of the pools, and like who's going to run like the Broadway Plaza one? Is it during events? Is it the, just a uh, certain little vendor station they're going to have for the hospital to come and help? Or If you basically imagine a soap dispenser, that's what it's going to be like. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking of where specifically to put it, how to monitor it, how to track it, um, not only use, but quantity, um, cost. Um, the one at the Plaza has already been donated um, from the hospital. Um, 
working with their cooperation okay. as part of our group. Um, we've talked about different scenarios for both the pool and the complex of having little packets for sale, concession stand, because there's always going to be somebody there, concessions why um, an event's going on. Plaza, there's just a lot of open time, so that's what we're talking about, a hand dispenser. Um, and we've talked about dispensers at all three locations as well. So, uh, yeah. Whatever is feasible and cost effective. Mm -hmm. I, w I would like to see us try to uh, reach out for some donations. I would imagine that there are some people in the community that wouldn't, uh, that would be able to step up and donate that um, to make cost, um, mm -hmm. just reduce that barrier right. for people at the pool that, that, you know, whether that's, you know, I think you can get marketing items where it says, Chuck Lambert's business, and you, you can hand those out. I think that there'd be some opportunity there that would help further reduce our costs and improve access to it. I mean, I think that's all stuff that we can figure out down the road. But yeah. I, I like the idea of, of trying to make this accessible. Um, yeah. I think it's a good whether we go for the grant or not. Uh, but certainly, I think that if we can show that we're we're reducing any barrier we possibly can, I think it would help improve our application when it comes time. And we've kind of, you know, quite honestly, just kind of started into this whole program pretty quickly because um, it does have to be in place a full year before you're sure. eligible um, sure. so we're really throwing this stuff together on the run and building it as it goes sure. makes sense what is the cost you're looking at <clears throat> cost for for setting up these stands and for the dispensers yeah uh, do you um, have a price on this uh, the hospital is actually going to donate I happened to be by the Broadway Plaza today and I saw the um, public service announcement about um, Winter Sun, which, you know, I thought that's that's really an appropriate thing yeah. to have down there. And I didn't, uh, I had <coughs> forgotten that we were going to be talking about this tonight, but uh, I think that it's, you're going to be addressing a need that is yeah. felt within the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not so. only sun, sunscreen, but sun cancer, sunburns, mm -hmm. yep. vitamin D. It's a full year thing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So do we need to make a, a motion? I, I, would, uh, I would move to approve resolution 2018-2078. I have a motion by Chuck. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Keaton. Any further discussion? Now all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we're moving on to the uh, purchase of the sports complex scoreboard uh, before you use a um, request for approval of the scoreboard uh, purchase so that we can order one the big scoreboard used on Dwayne field is no longer operable um, it's been patched and band-aid for the past several years um, the company that owns it or built it is no longer doing scoreboard so we can no longer get replacement parts they will no longer come and service it We've done as much as we can, and it's no longer working, so it needs to be replaced for Dwayne Field. Um, we've the three entities, the city, the high school, and the college, have all been working together um, to try to find the most feasible place to feasible way to fund this. Um, this is the highest one, um, highest price for uh, what we're wanting. Uh, there's a lot of freedom and a lot of leeway. We don't get the grant funding we're expecting. Um, and also the grant funding uh, specifically dictates how we go, um, how we address the advertising around it. So, so the college see. would put in 3,000, high school 3,000? Yep, and the city 3,000. And the college so. gets 25 to 27 games out of it, high school 10 to 12, and Little League 18 to 16, 18? said, yeah. They got, that's a better deal than they got on the uh, football field for their soccer games. They're getting pretty good. Now, do we know where we're at with the grant application? The deadline was the 1st, December 1st. Um, so I would imagine I was really hoping I'd hear by now. Okay. Um, so it should be any day um, what the result of that is. A big part of that grant, the community foundation, is community working together, the three entities working together. And, um, so that is a big point for that. Right. So. Any other questions? You 
said that if we don't get the grant, that that'll change, or, or is this, um, so is this what we're approving spending up to this amount, or we, we need to approve the spend? That we are, this is the, the scoreboard we're gonna, we're gonna get, and we're gonna go ahead and buy it, and then if we can recoup costs from donors or other things, then that'll help reduce it on the, the back side of it, is that? Yeah, um, this is the most we would, it would cost uh, for what we're wanting. Um, like I said, we've already got 9,000 to start with, um, depending on what that grant falls into place. If it doesn't at all, then like I said, we change how we address advertising. Um, actual payment for this is until 30 days after it's shipped, and it's about a four week manufacturing time. Um, so that's why we're trying to move on it and uh, put this in place. And um, Does this include installation and everything? No, this is just delivery. Okay, who, who installs it? The city would. Oh, okay. It's hanging and bolting to the frame. Okay. The, uh, especially with this company, the guy is out of El Dorado, and he's already come up on his own to make sure our frame actually works for mm -hmm. the system. And you said it's 30 days after delivery, so we have a chance to test it out, get it installed, test after it? Shipped. I mean, after shipped. Yeah. Okay. But we still Which have. About a week. That would allow us time, though, to get it up and see if it's functioning properly and everything? Okay. I don't know stuff before the payment. What's that? I don't know stuff before the payment. Yeah. Uh, and specifically with this company, the, the conformity of all the scoreboards and having the all same pieces of the same company um, is a big thing, is why we've lasted this long, the last four scoreboards out there. We've been able to swap in and out and mm -hmm. keep dragging them along. Yeah. So we'd be looking roughly $15,000 the city would be out. No, the city's only be out three. Everything no, else, if you don't get the grants. Everything else is going to recover through advertising. We'll have to fund it up in, in front, but it will get, we we'll recoup. If we get the advertising. Okay. Yeah, and we'll get the advertising. I would move to approve the scoreboard purchase from Navico Scoreboard Company for $21,994.24. I have a motion by Keaton. Do I have a second? Uh, just, a, just a logistical question. Does this need to be reworded for up to 21994 or do we just need to say 4994 I, I think you're okay because we're still going to have to write a check for it, no matter. And I've got it in the minutes how we would intend to pay for it. Okay. I, but okay. yes, this would be what we would write the check for. Just want to make sure our cross and teeth and off my eyes. And one other question. Where was that? Would that money be coming out of, out of the wreck, or was that 15 coming out of it? Capital improvement. It says here. Capital improvement yeah. fund? Yeah. The 3,000 would be out of the special person wreck fund, and that would be our share, and then the rest of it would be out of the capital improvement fund, and kind of floating. Okay. I would second. <coughs> I would second from Chuck. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. I do have a quick question for you, Chris. Do we have an estimated timeline as to what it would take, how long it would take to recoup the funds? If um, just per se we didn't get the grant. If we get zero from the grant, we'll start moving directly on um, the advertising spots. Um, like you said, you can't really go to somebody without having a real specific number we have. Um, there are several that we've already talked to of possibility moving from the fence to the scoreboard for a little bit more. So. We've already just started those conversations. That's, that's my other question. Even if we did get the grant, it seems to me like we'd still want to get the advertising mm -hmm. on it because then that's more money to go in your, mm -hmm. in the other part of the field. Yeah. Um, if we have to charge more for advertising, it'll be a one-time upfront fee to cover the cost of the scoreboard. Okay. If we get a majority of that covered through grant and the 9000 already, we're going to back that off, have a smaller amount, and then you have yearly income. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like that. So, Good. Very, Very good. good. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thank <coughs> All good for that. Yeah. Well done. Motion. Good. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Uh, moving on. Cloud Core 2019 Professional Services Agreement. Hi. Mrs. This, is, this is the last Hello. time we're going to let you do this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, before you, our professional services agreement, um, the only real change, if you go to page two, there's a list of the services that we're providing. If you go to H, um, that 
the facilitation of the Cloud County Opportunity Zone projects. So that's new. Of course, uh, the east side of town, the entire east side of town is now an Opportunity Zone. And so it'll be Cloud Corp's mission to help uh, cultivate projects there. We've learned a little bit more about Opportunity Zones and have learned that we don't necessarily have to set up our own fund. There's plenty of capital out there. They're just looking for projects. We have a couple, of course, that we're working with. However, um, it, that is up to us to do for you, and that's why that's added into this grant agreement, or into this agreement. And so what we would be looking for is um, for the city to, to sign this agreement. And I, I have to tell you, six years ago, I was sitting in the back and Lil Toman came and um, asked that you guys give, it, uh, give me a chance <laughs> to be your Cloud Corp director, and I'm, I'm so very grateful that you did. So thank you so much, and um, we are working diligently to find a replacement, and we've had some good applications, and so I would expect that we'll see some movement on that here very soon. We were hoping by tonight that it's not quite there yet. I didn't know if we needed to prorate this, you know, once we actually had some <laughs> I would encourage you maybe no. Um, and I'm actually just about a half a block down the street, so I'm guessing they will find me if something is needed. Thank Phil will share you. I think for a little while, yeah. <laughs> but again, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Ashley. Yep. You've done a, a remarkable job for this town and you're leaving behind some pretty big shoes to fill. I'm sure you don't want to <laughs> think, think it over. Things just got give, real give awkward. Give the bank an extra 30 <laughs> days. And if everything goes to hell, sleep hey, at night well. Throw an extra five days. <laughs> Ashley, how is the uh, job search going for a replacement? Um, I you can be honest. You've got nothing to lose at this point. I have point. nothing to lose. I think we're getting pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah. That's Are all. you going to say yes? I appreciate you trying to get that out. Yeah. <laughs> out, uh, okay. Well, let's let's see if we can quantify out of towner. Um, I I'm, pr I'm not comfortable with saying okay. any more details at this point. Somebody on this planet. <clears throat> what zip code do they live in? <clears throat> I have the contract here, so I'll leave them with Stacy. And um, again, I from a, a, uh, I need a motion to accept Cloud Corp. Two hundred. 2019 professional service agreement. I would move to approve the Cloud Core 2019 professional services agreement. I have a agreement. motion by uh, Chuck. Do I have a second? Se I have a second by Christy. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Okay, uh, moving on. Campbell and Johnson 2019 professional services agreement. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, before you is the Approval of the Annual City Engineer Consulting Agreement. We've been with Campbell and Johnson for nearly 50 years. They've provided good, good quality service for us. You have in your packet the cover memo that kind of describes what we're doing here and also the um, agreement itself from Campbell and Johnson. They provide us basically four categories worth of services that's on the appendix, appendix to the agreement. What the price tag is associated with here is category A, which is their on call services. So Primarily we use it for the categories, the subcategories that are listed there. A large portion of it's used when our team has some <coughs> issues out, whether it's working through streets or utilities or just needing some assistance like in Bruno's area for getting some additional maps ready to go. They go through and they research uh, the documents that Campbell and Johnson has. Having the long relationship with Campbell and Johnson has allowed them to accumulate a large library of resources for us and that's been very, very valuable. So we do appreciate having this agreement in place that allows, allows some research to take place. Um, another great uh, factor of the annual agreement is being able to provide construction estimates and sketches for us, and we use those pretty frequently uh, to be able to come to you with preliminary estimates of projects to say we think we need to get this done, you ask us how much it's going to cost, um, Ken does a nice job of preparing what it's going to look like for us, gives a great visual aid and gives us a good estimate of, of what that will cost both design and construction side. So again, that's included in that monthly fee. Um, preparing the maps, like I said, Bruno does a lot of maps mapping with, um, with Campbell and Johnson. And then just any professional consultation. So as we get some of those develop developments that come in, an example that I can think of is when um, Concordia Technologies came in to apply for their building permit. Ron happened to be on, on vacation. Um, we do let him occasionally take vacation sometimes. Um, and so we were able to keep that plan with you going so as not to hold up Concordia Technologies development by calling on Ken to ask him to review uh, the site drainage for that project. And that helped out quite a bit. So 
You'll see that there is a $50 per month increase um, compared to last year. The fee was steady for 2017 and 2018, so there has been no increase for the last two years. $50 a month, $600 a year to have this on-call service is, is very good. You'll see down in Category B that their uh, basic hourly rates are right close to $100. So if you divide that out, that's about 14 hours worth of work that, that we're able to get with Campbell & Johnson a month. Um, in the past, the invoices that we've received for them for one month have not been itemized, so we know that we pay the lump sum, but we have not been tracking how, that's, how that time has been used. I've asked Ken to um, at least categorize those into the subcategories so we know how much time is spent on research, how much time is spent on estimates, how much time is spent on maps, for example. So we'll be able to better understand how that, how that monthly fee is utilized from our city staff. But, uh, tonight, we just ask for your approval to go into agreement with them again for 2019. Um, again, we've had good service with them and would like to continue that relationship. Uh, on drawings and stuff, um, I see you've asked for hard, hard copies. Mm -hmm. I thought you wanted uh, digital because of the space that hard copies would take up. Yes, in, in the text of the agreement, not in the appendices, but in the text of the agreement, um, it's also included that any future projects that go forward, we will get one PDF copy electronically of, of all the documents to begin our own records retention. And on the stuff that they've had in past years, are we working on that? We are. We've been talking with Ken quite a bit about um, a methodology to be able to get electronic versions of all of the plans of ours that, that they have. We have hard copies. Um, I know specifically when we moved from the old city hall to the new city hall, there were some plans that were lost, so we don't believe that we have full and complete records. Um, Campbell Johnson is in the process of digitizing their records right now. We ask them to make us a priority, and as soon as they have that done, talk with them about negotiating a fee to purchase the electronic copies. I know it sounds strange because we've already paid for hard copies, but because they're licensed professional engineers, they have basically copyright ownership of those plans. They, they own that intellectual property. And our former contracts did not state that we got an electronic copy. So we're going to have to pay a small fee again to get an electronic copy of that. We won't know what the price tag is associated with that until they finish their scans so that we know the quantity of, of documents that would be available. So we're looking at that as a separate project is the bottom line. But all future we will. All, all future projects that we do, so for example, Ron will be bringing up, up to you a project to approve for a mill and overlay later on in this meeting. So a, as a result of this agreement, he tells you what category that falls in under this agreement, um, then we would be getting a, a, an electronic version of those plans, for example. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? I ask for your approval. I move to approve the Campbell and Johnson 2019 Professional Services Agreement. I have a motion by Mark. Do I have a second? Second. Or second by Keaton. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Next Thanks. up. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark. Oh, I well. said thank you. Uh, next up, Ordinance 2018 3145. Drainage easement, vacation. Hi, Bruno. Seriously, before you get started, Bruno, Bruno, way, way back. Did you ever possibly imagine that I'd be sitting up here? Way, way back. We're still struggling with it. It might get worse, sir. Now that we built the dam and got our storage, that part isn't needed anymore because this is all for that, for storage. So, and this is a buildable lot here. So a piece of that easement got over onto this buildable lot, and this has all been elevated, you know, for the big mountains that come and fill, our, fill it up there. So this is buildable, so we wanted to get that, and KDOT turned that over to us, so it's basically just going through the motions and getting that vacated so there's no issues with building on it. I would move to approve ordinance 2018-3145. have a motion by Chuck. Do I have a second? Second. A second by Mark. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, aye. same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Next one is ask 428 East 11. Starting the condemnation process at the bench. 
burned on fire a while back. There's been no motion on it, no action. We never received any insurance proceeds because it wasn't insured. I talked to the renter. I think I alluded to that in the memo a little bit. I talked to the owner lives in Hebron, Nebraska. We talked about the demo program and the fact that it qualified for that, but he's not paid the back taxes on it, so it won't qualify. So he's exploring his option. He's thinking he may want to pay the back taxes and then come and get it on the demo program hmm. or just tear it down himself. But he supposedly got three estimates, and I haven't heard from him. I don't know. People tell you lots of things. But I wanted to start the process so that we, so we wouldn't be sitting here two years from now looking at this thing wondering what the guy's going to do. Yeah. So we kind of force the hand a little bit. Yeah. Once you start the process, how long does he have? To, uh, how me. long does he have? Does, well, it depends you, what, on what you put in that resolution. We're, we're going to have the public hearing. This is going to set the public hearing for 30 days after the second ad. Okay. And then on that resolution, what I'm going to do, if I don't hear from him, I'm going to put zero days to do something with that. Okay. And then we'll go immediately to bidding it out the next day. But if he communicates with me and wants to get on the demo program, like we did with the Bogart house at Burr on 5th Street, he asked for 90 days, I think. Mm -hmm. And he got sold now, and the new owner is planning on tearing it down. So, and the way the state law works, those these can be sold time and time and time again, and you have to start the process every time over yeah. with the new so one. So you got to be careful with that. We do the resolution. It's got to be in the paper. Three, two, two times, ten two days times, apart. And then a week apart. A week, week apart? Yeah. And then 30 days after. And then 30 days after okay. that's right. And I think the date's in there, January, uh, February 19th. Or so if you got it in tomorrow, you're still looking at 45 days. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's never a fast process. He's like, the only e exception to that, and I've used it once on a house that burnt on West Eleventh Street. It was so rickety after it burnt. They got the fire out, but the top story was sitting there blowing in the wind. So we had Ron, I think, go down knock it down. I think he went with the high loader just to knock it down because we were afraid it was going to blow over our neighbor's house. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's I was wondering. Forty-five That's the days. One thing you can do in an emergency, you can knock something down to keep it safe. And we we use that to cut a tree down once too that was going to fall on a house. Like just looking at those pictures, how dangerous is that place right now? I mean, it's too cold for kids to be out goofing off, playing around in somebody else's yard, but. No, it's not. <laughs> what did you do when you were young? Well, that's why I, I would have been in that house goofing around. Yeah. Well, that's why the caution state there, and if this, if this resolution passes tonight, I'm going to put a placard on it tomorrow or Friday that right. says good day and keep off and no, mm -hmm. no, don't do anything unless you contact me. Mm -hmm. And that would be for the owner, that's too, stuff. just in case. Yeah. Let's get it started. Do I have a motion? I would move to approve ordinance 2018 3145. Motion, Keaton. Do I have a second? I'll sit. 2079. Ah, I would move to approve resolution 2018 2079. Nine. I'll second. I have a second by Mark. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. <coughs> approve. Put the sign on. Thanks, Bruno. Okay, uh, discussion on the Housing Authority Board appointment. <clears throat> Sheila Jackson couldn't be here this evening, so I'm filling in for her. Um, we had one board, board position that will expire at the end of this year. Happens to be Stacy's um, position on the Housing Authority Board. Uh, she's enjoyed serving. We enjoy having a city representative on that board, and so we're asking the commission to approve her reappointment this evening. I move to reappoint Stacy Smith to the Housing Authority Board. I have a motion by Mark. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Christy. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Congratulations, Stacy. <laughs> welcome. Okay. Affirmation of exempt property status for IRB certification. You have in your packet some information about the um, affirmation of, of exempt status for the Concordia Tractor property. This is just an annual one of those things that we just have to do every year to be able to give back to Bond Council and make sure that everything is still compliant, which it is. This may be a little bit confusing. Last meeting we had you uh, approve a change in name on, on some bonds. That takes effect after the first of the year. 
this action is actually looking back over the year of 2018. So the name of Concordia Tractor Inc. is still legitimate for this action. Um, but we ask you tonight to approve or to affirm the exempt property status for IRB certification for Concordia Tractor Inc. Are there any questions? Nope. I move to affirm the exempt property status for IRB certification for Concordia Tractor. I have a motion by Mark. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a second by Keaton. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next item, engineering services for mill and overlay project. Mayor and commissioners, the city, the city uh, solicited proposals for engineering services for a mill and overlay. Uh, that'd be for the design, the bid specifications, bid letting and construction inspection. As for the project from 5th Street and Archer to 11th Street, uh, we received only one bid, and that was from Campbell and Johnson, in the amount of $13,740. RMA told me they was too busy to take this on, but appreciated me coming out and asking them. Um, recommendation would be to approve the city manager to enter into a contract with Campbell and Johnson for the engineering services for $13,740. Is there any questions? How long do, is that project going to take, do you think? Well, I think on his agreement, he uh, was going to have it all bid and everything sometime in March. So we're putting the parameters on from they can start maybe late April to do the overlay and maybe have to be completed by October. October is a late finish date. April will be an early start date. <coughs> okay. So it, that gives the contractor a little bit of leeway most of the summer. So, you know, we can maybe get a better bid out of it so they can fit it into their projects. So this is, how will you handle 6th Street then when you go? 6th Street, we're jumping. So we're just going to do a, a, a block and then jump over 6th to the 11th. Yeah, 6th Street, actually I do clink projects on mm -hmm. that because that's K9 and if we can split that out with them for 75-25. So I don't... <clears throat> is it is it more expensive to add that extra block? I mean, is it because you're going to because be going they're going to jump over? Yeah. Is there any significant difference in cost? Would it make more sense to do six to eleventh and then do? I mean, fifth doesn't. I mean, Archer doesn't go much deeper than that. They're going to have to be doing some jumping anyhow because when they get past uh, Sixth Street, we're going to go back about twenty feet on the radius, so they're going to have to pick up and move around. But, I mean, they're going to have to be moving all the time. Okay. I so, I mean. I didn't know because it was a second. Because, I mean, milling it, I mean, laying it, they're, they're just going to go down it. And they'll lay it and they'll end. They'll jump across if they want to or turn around and do that block first. It's up to them. I mean, okay. it's, I, just I really know. don't think it's going to be that much difference. I move to approve the city manager to sign the Campbell and Johnson agreement for the mill and overlay project for okay. thirty. $15,740. I have a motion by Christy. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Keaton. Any further discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same side. Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you. Nice job, class of 78. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, change order for treatment plant phase one, Mrs. Lang. We are finally nearing completion of phase one of the wastewater treatment plant. Um, work's gone pretty well. Quality of work has been good. Um, length of time has not. So we stood up before you a couple of months ago and let you know that we were assessing liquidity damages to APAC. We finalized those conversations last Friday. I can't say that it was overly cordial, but we got to the end, which was good. Um, so we had assessed $42,000 in, in damages, which was what the contract allowed by the letter of the contract. We actually incurred expenses of thir an extra $32,400 from PEC for extra on-site construction observation and inspection services. We, we paid them because we knew that we, would, we could be able to recover some of the liquidated damages from APAC. Uh, we ended up settling last Friday for $24,000. We kind of met in the middle. 
APAC was adamant that they didn't owe anything, um, but we got got them to agree to settle for 24000 This kept us from going to arbitration. Um, I can't speak to the reasons why, but the way the contract was set up between the city and APAC was that the mediation clause was removed from it and it goes straight to arbitration. Mediation is where Justin can sit down with their attorney and in a day or two hash it out for us. Um, going to arbitration, we have to hire the independent third party. Um, we don't necessarily get to pick who that who that person is. They have to take time to research and review everything. They could decide to award whatever level of damages they think are appropriate. If we force the issue, we would likely pay APAC attorney's fees on top of that. Um, if, if they force the issue, maybe they would pay our attorney's fees. We don't know who would win. There's no guarantee. By settling for this amount, there was a guarantee that we could recover some of those costs. So that's what we chose to make that business decision and recover some of those costs. What it resulted in was that we have to finalize the paperwork for the project, which is what Change Order 2 does. Change Order 2 finalizes the date of substantial completion, the date of final completion, and then it also finalizes the contract amount. So the way that we assess liquidated damages, there's not actually any cash that changes hand because we were, we were withholding final payment to the contractor to determine what level of, of damages we would assess. So now we do a deductive change order in the amount of $24,000. It reduces the contract amount by that amount. Um, if you look back in your records, you'll notice that the original contract was only about $2,000 more than what the final contract amount was. You'll recall that in change order one, we increased the contract amount by about $21,000, and I think that was for, Jeremy, help me out on that, something across the... Wasn't across it gate? It was the gate, gate, gate two? Yeah. Do across ditch yep. one. Yeah. Gate two. Right. So we, we still ended up net positive on the contract amount in, in, in the end. Um, as, net as far positive as the being good? Yes, yes. As, as far as the contract with APAC, we ended up paying about $2,400 less than what we had signed the original agreement to, to end up there. So anyway, th this evening what we need you to do is to go ahead and approve change order two, um, and that would allow us to finalize that contract. I can sign that change order. We could issue the final payment because we had also been withholding retainage, and there was a small balance to finish that we had been withholding for a few months from them. The project actually was finally complete on August um, August 6th was the final completion date for the project, or August 8th, I think, is when they finally got everything done. We do still have a couple outstanding warranty items. So that's normal. They have about a year to complete those. We're waiting for the weather to break to complete those items, and then we will be concluded. Are there any questions? Technically, that was a good contract, wasn't it, Jason? Yes. Um, are you talking about with the liquidated damages? No, I was talking about the contract per se. Because yes. I, I remember when that was brought to us on the thirty-two thousand, and you said that no, this is yes, a, no, we a good contract. Yeah, and so Jeremy and, and Amy and I had a lot of conversations about this, and what we kind of what I had to explain, and, and they fully understood was, is that arbitration is expensive, and that's a lot of times why it's built in there. It's actually doesn't take as long as a trial would, for example but it's just it binding, okay? So we couldn't, there are very minute reasons why you could, you could appeal a, an arbitration that's completely binding. So I explained, you know, there, you have to make a business decision there because potentially what you could do is, is you could say, I want the 32,000, you give it to me now, or we go to arbitration. By the time it's said and done, I could have recouped the 32, but paid far more than that when it was said and done in attorney's fees. Arbitration is expensive. Um, an arbitrator that, uh, a mediator that I use who is, I would put up against any arbitrator or mediator in Kansas. Um, I spoke to his office. He had, arbitrations are not common. He hadn't done an arbitration since 2016. Uh, but at, they, and they gave me a low end probably, said it would be about $325 an hour for arbitration. We're looking at two to three days probably arbitration problem with arbitration is if I get an arbitrator who decides, you know what, <coughs> it wasn't really their fault, they could not only award us nothing, they could then, in the Arbitration Act that governs, there's it's a set of rules in most states that govern kind of the rules of arbitration, many times a prevailing party, if, well, I take that back, many times uh, attorney's fees are awarded if, the, if the, the, essentially the company or the individual that is sued or that is, you know, the arbitration is filed against, if they prevail, so if APAC would have prevailed, strong likelihood we would have had to pay their attorney's fees, which would have probably been in the neighborhood, very conservative, $50,000. Uh, 
um, because what happens is if my client doesn't have to pay, I'm going to pop up my attorney's fees. Um, so in the long run, we actually uh, probably saved uh, money. I, I just, had this been something, like I explained to Amy, had this been a case where we had liquidated damages in the amount of $500,000, we're going to arbitration if you're offering me 24 or if you're offering me 20. But in a situation like this where that amount can easily be overcome by our, our fees and our expenses and stuff like that, we got to weigh that business decision and I, I believe this was a, a good business decision. Yes, the contract was solid. Yes, we were in the right. However, that doesn't necessarily how much, mean we would How much are we going to gonna pay to more. prove that? Yeah. Are we exactly. going to pay more than $8,000 exactly. to prove that? Yeah. Yes, you would have. Yeah. You would have, honestly, you would have paid more than $8,000 to even get in the room. Yeah. My, my reason for that question was not because I, I, what you did was right. Yeah. I mean, that was the best way to do it. But what that tells me is, as long as I'm sitting here, I never want to see a contract with their name on it because their contracts aren't worth anything. If they can't stand by their contract, I think it's time this, this city stands up to people who won't abide by their contract and just says, you know, thank you. There's other people that go with their contracts. And that this is my own personal feeling. I, I, I did commit to them at, at the end of this because the quality of the work on their pro on this project was good. The quality of our recent projects with them, they did all the water line work on 6th Street for Phases 1 and Phase 2. I did commit to them that because of that quality of work that they'd done, because the other projects had gone so well, I was not going to recommend to the commission that we deem them not a responsible bidder in the future. So I mean, that's if, if, they, if they choose not to bid us, that's fine. If they're, you, you know, how, however things shake out, that's fine. But, but I, I told them that I would not recommend to the commission that we um, blacklist them from bidding. Right. And again, this is my own, my own right. personal. Because, I mean, you can do all the best work in the world if you can't honor your contract. What good are you? There's other people that can do good work too, and under the contract. And that's all I'm saying. That's why I ask about the contract. Sure. Yeah. And you know, honestly, you know, it's not uncommon. I've seen people just say, oh, "We're not going to worry about the liquidated damages." I mean, Amy held their feet to the fire, and I think it surprised them, uh, which is a good thing because we, you know, she basically stated to them, "This is what the contract says. Yep. You made a mistake. You have to fix it." Thank you. Thank you for good going forward. They know that we're not messing around anymore. Yeah, so exactly. Good, good, good work. Good yeah. work. I might. Um, and, and I know you said you weren't quite sure as to the reason, um, but it might be important to try to include, uh, in order to make sure that mediation is included before the, the next step to, to arbitration. Yeah. Uh, hindsight's twenty twenty makes a lot of sense, but just that might give us that you know, greater flexibility, greater adjustment. I don't know if it would have made that much of a difference in this case or not. Still getting, I mean, I think what this shows to me is that there's some principal things that we can work on, but that this is all a good conversation to have. This this was the right thing to do. Yeah, that comes down to integrity. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And that's, and to me, integrity, when you start dealing with stuff like that, that's important. Yeah. And I guess I don't see any with them, but that's my own opinion. Okay. I would move to approve the change order number two with APAC for phase one improvement improvements for twenty four thousand. I have a motion by Chuck. Do I have a second? Second. A second by Keaton. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, manager's report. Manager's report. <laughs> Manager's report. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. You ran an interference for Russell, or I what? I haven't been here long enough. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get you guys used to these long meetings again. We have plenty of food. Yeah. Glad we have popcorn. Chuck. This evening, you can see in front of you um, the great job that city staff did uh, working hard to help provide for needy members of, of our community through the Resource Center. Um, I'm really, really proud of the participation. We had 35 out of 55 FTE participate, or 35 out of 55 employees participate, which was great, about a, a, a participation rate of about 63%. So that was wonderful for our first time doing this. Um, we gathered uh, 3,363 items 
and $614 in cash donated by city employees. We converted the $614 in cash to 540 items, additional items, a few perishables. So that brought us to a grand total of 3,903 items. When we divide that by 55 employees, that's 70.96 or almost 71 items per FTE. Mm -hmm. Our original goal was 20. So we felt like we far exceeded that goal. So our, again, our employees just did a great job. Um, I know Stacy's already visited with Tanya about our plans for delivering the items over to the resource center and I think she's um, wel welcoming them with open arms. I did talk with Dave Garnis via email a little bit this afternoon. Um, they too got really close, like around 34, 3,500 items. Um, they're still working through their final count, but because they had, uh, they have almost 200 employees, their um, their per FTE rate is much lower than ours, a little bit less than 20. Um, so as far as our competition goes, we can hold up the trophy and say we won this year. So that's that's pretty exciting. Um, we're, I'm a little competitive, so I'm pretty pumped about that. But I was very thankful that the hospital was willing to take us on, and they did great. Um, the other thing I know that Dave will, Dave will probably report is that in, in years past, their attempts at food collections have not been that good, and they significantly improved their giving this year, which I think he is very, very proud of. So we'll let him give those, those accolades later. Are there any questions for me? Just for the purposes of the story, I want to be clear. Um, the city kicked the health center's butt when it came to <laughs> food collection. That sounds like very politically correct language. Here. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Jim? We're still working to maintain and build on the relationships. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we, we we have a great yeah, great relationship with the with the Hawkeye Health Center, so we, we, we really great. appreciate Congratulations. that. Congratulations. Front page. Front page. <laughs> we we don't, don't Any other questions? Inner, inner, inner. Oh, all right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Staff reports. No one wants to face you. I'm, I'm the nicest guy here. <laughs> Nobody? Bruno? No. Are we all done with that? No staff reports? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll move on to the uh, mayor and commissioners, commissioner comments and reports. Uh, Commissioner Matthew. I want to uh, thank all city employees, uh, the fire department, uh, EMTs, uh, police department, everybody for the way that you reacted to this, the uh, snowstorm we had, the recent snowstorm. I had comments from people, you know, saying, boy, they did a great job and really appreciate it. And I, had other, and I heard other comments saying, oh, you hit my yard with a snowplow or yeah, uh, they they sh shoved the snow the wrong way on the street, and I'm like, but was your street open? You know, it's uh, and there is a, and Amy and I were talking about it the other day. I mean, if if people that can scoop their snow and stuff, you you can uh, do a little work ahead of time before the snow plow to make it a lot better at the end of your driveway uh, before the snow plow gets there. But uh, great job, and uh, it was uh, very, I hear, it was very challenging out there, and, and uh, it's not so hard for people to look at the weather forecast before they get out on the road nowadays. We came back from Austin, Texas on, that, on Saturday because we looked at the weather forecast, and it's like, okay, we're getting home Saturday night. But it still amazes me uh, that people, when it, you know, it's really not an emergency, but they're still out in this stuff and it creates a lot of a lot of safety problems and danger for other people puts other people at risk but uh, great job to everybody and uh, thank you very much that's it i'm sorry ma'am could you step to the podium please We also need Name, to address, address. <laughs> driver's license. Hi, Sue. Hi. Actually, I'm here because I'm a fan of yours, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but in That's regard to. The, will get you everywhere. Yes. <laughs> in regard to the street, and Ronnie can. Uh, can follow up on that. <laughs> some, some people went off the road right in front of my house, and. Uh, it was 11th Street, and I came out with my two snow shovels and offered them for people to maybe help themselves. 
And you, after four people went off the road, Just shake your head. Uh, finally, the street, it was about dark, but it got plowed out. And when I went out to retrieve my snow shovels, one was broken in half. And I thought, you know, I guess that's okay. And then the next day, I was on my way to town and country to replace my one snow shovel. And there on my front porch was a brand new snow shovel from the person who evidently broke it. broke it. And I would like to thank that person if I knew who they were. That's a great story. Yeah. There's a story for Do you. you know? It is. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that because that's a great, that is great. Yeah. So, Sue, now you have three? No, she got a broke. She's broken. There you go. Okay, uh, Commissioner. Yes. <laughs> this is Chuck Lambert. I thought you were going to say something, so I stopped speaking. <clears throat> Commissioner uh, Lambert. I would not uh, speak over you, sir. I respect the position that you hold. Uh, you know, I, I, just to probably echo a lot of what uh, Commissioner Matthew said, I, I think there are a lot of, a lot of people who are really eager to, to lob blows and to, to talk about how we're not doing what we need to do. You know, I think that the storm was of such a nature, there was such a, you know, with the way it started out with rain, um, and then the blizzard came in. You know, I think uh, when, the, when the graders went by the roads, uh, it, made it, it made it difficult through the driveways, uh, I think especially because of the, just how late the storm ran and then the trucks running down the roads, and then it froze that night, and I think it just made it all more difficult. I think the city staff does what they can, uh, shy of walking uh, the roads and making sure that. The other thing that I really appreciate about living in this community um, is that you, you, have, you have stories like that. Um, you also see neighbors that, that are aware of uh, other neighbors who maybe aren't as able to get out and about. Um, I know once we had our drive cleared, we walked over to the neighbor and helped kind of chip out. And we weren't the only ones doing that. Um, it just is, it's just really neat to be able, that's really what attracted us, attracted me uh, to, to live here and help my wife be more comfortable moving back. Um, is wanting to, to have our, our family grow up in a community that still takes care of one another. We still look out for one another. Um, so I really appreciate just the, uh, the spirit of this community. So, yeah. Commissioner Snavely. I got nothing this evening. Okay. Commissioner Hash. Well, in the spirit of uh, appreciating living in a small town, and particularly this one, I want to give some uh, accolades to our police department, our first responders. Um, mm. Two weeks ago, I was anticipating a, a nice evening with my parents who were just driving in. My mother needed nail polish at Walmart before I got home, and was and had an accident in the wall in the Walmart parking lot. And um, my dad said it was amazing how quickly there were people there to help. And that was even before the emergency personnel arrived. She was cared for very well. It was um, a blessing to be able to take, have her go to the uh, hospital here. She also got a trip down to Salina, so uh, I know that there were a number of people who were involved in all that. But I just can't say enough how much I appreciate having those services available here and uh, my mom's in good shape. She did not break a hip, thank God. And uh, but it was it was an exciting way to start our holiday weekend. So, um, and the nice thing is that time after time, people said, "Oh yeah, I know your daughter." So that was kind of cool too. So, thanks to everybody. Very well put, uh, former Mayor Sacco. <laughs> yes, Mayor. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, you know, I talk about community. I had the chance, the honor, I should say, to being part of the, one of the biggest family Thanksgivings I've ever been in. And that's at the Armory. I mean, mm. the volunteers and the people who were there, it's not just the volunteers that made it such a special occasion, it was all the people that came. I think there was over close to 600 people. And that's, that's a big party. And that was, that was fun to be a part of. And there's not too many places you could go and uh, do that and, and know a lot of the people. I mean, a lot of big cities will have that and stuff, but, you know, it's the people that go there normally are the ones that, you know, are needy or anything else. But here, it's just the people come and got together. And I think that was kind of neat. And I'd like to thank our new mayor. He did a great job. He kept me in line here. Well, I'm not done yet. Uh, <laughs> and he's the one that said, there's some good games on, I'll this game's short. So he's the reason why, Jim, you're still here at 7 o'clock. I'm not buying tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, by, by the way, by, when we do adjourn, we're readjourning at Easy G's, and I've got the Blade credit card, if anybody would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, again, thank you to everyone involved for uh, this has been such an enlightening and an eye-opening experience. And uh, I hope that, if nothing else, the story that the Blade is able to do about uh, this position, I, I think that's one of, the, one of the problems is that not enough of this community citizens, citizens are really aware of how hard the city staff and the volunteers work and what's involved in keeping this town operating on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, it, it's a poor county and there's a dwindling tax base that uh, provides for the needs of this community and it, it's a struggle, it's difficult work and it's admirable work and uh, I'm very impressed by how this community and all of you and again the city and its staff takes care of the citizenry here. Uh, it's very special. It's just, there's no hospital. And darn, nobody's being born in Concordia anymore, and that bothers me. That's, uh, that's all I'm going to say. They're being born in Salina, Beloit, Minneapolis, Belleville. I mean, come foreigners. on. They won't be. They're foreigners. I'm just saying. I mean, who wants to be born a buffalo but raised a panther? Come on. It's just, uh, <laughs> you know. Okay, I'd like to, I need a motion to move into executive session, the preliminary discussion of acquisition of real estate. I would move that the city commission recess into executive session for the preliminary discussion of acquisition of real estate, exception KSA 754319B6 with Amy Lane and Bruno Rogan and Justin Farrell in attendance and to reconvene in the city commission chamber at 7, 12 p.m. <laughs> I have a motion. Do I have a second? second? I have a second by Chris. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Good job. No Ooh. action was taken. I move to adjourn. I second. I have a motion by Chuck, second by Mark. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Jim, did you want to start your turn talking about the dog ornament?